Now there's probably a more sensible way for a group of friends to spend a couple of thousand pounds going to the US to the middle of a desert to watch a show get filmed for YouTube. Twenty seventeen was the first year Motortrend did zip tie drags down in Tucson, Arizona, and as longtime fans of the show, Chris and I both tried to get there. We were both looking at the feasibility of getting out there, flights and everything else, and how much it would cost. But because it's 5,000 miles away and we can't just jump in the car, we'd have to get flights, short notice and everything else, and it was going to be about £800 a head just for the flights, let alone hotel, car, food, fuel and whatever other shenanigans we get up to. So it wasn't really feasible and we kind of just had to knock the whole idea on the head. Now if you haven't seen it before, it's a car show and a test and tune drag event and um, a big social gearhead meet as well. Loads of other stuff. Everyone brings their projects down and just kind of lays them out in the car park and it's a really good event. You've got Mike and Dave who are there with Steve and Lucky and they bring a bunch of their project cars down from the show and they do a big convoy down I-10 from Irwindale Speedway down to Tucson Dragway and it's really really good. Like, having been there a few times now the social atmosphere is fantastic. We've made loads of friends who recognize us when we go back there, which is really weird going to a completely different country with a couple of thousand people and them going, oh, hey, it's you guys. And like we are now those idiot guys who come from the UK every year, which I guess there's worse things to be known by. So the 2018 event was announced at the end of 2017 and I would just been freshly installed into a new job, which was great. And I was feeling a bit financially reckless and there was a sale on with British Airways at the same time. And this meant that I was tempted. And me being tempted is always a bad thing because things like the Thunderbird happen. The job I got was really a six month contract. It wasn't a full time job. It was an initial six month contract, but that meant that I only had half the number of holiday days I would normally have. So instead of having what they gave at the time, 25 days, I had 12 and I had booked 19 of them which is a problem. So I was grossly oversubscribed on holiday um, and I would have to do some creative bargaining to try and make anything happen with my line manager to go and visit a YouTube show in the desert. So just to make sure that I wasn't missing out on something that was eminently possible, I put all the details in and I went through to try and see how much it was going to cost. And it turns out it was about half what it would have been before, easily. The flight alone was about £400 instead of £800 and with the car and the hotel all kind of rolled in, the total cost per person was about £600, which was amazing. Um, we'd end up flying into LAX and then fly back down to Tucson and then we'd go out through Fort Worth and back to Heathrow, which was great. Like The quicker route home via Dallas actually meant I might be able to land before I started work on the Monday afterwards, which was really, really handy, although it meant flying and sleeping on the plane, which uh, never a good idea to kind of bank on that as needing it when you're going to work. So I said to Chris, how do you fancy going to Tucson for probably a weekend um, to see zip tie drags? And he went, yes, obviously. How much is it going to cost? So we started going through all the details and Sean, who you remember gave us his TT, if you've seen some of our kit car project, um, he also came along with us, which brought some of the cost down a little bit more. Brilliant. Apart from it was a Friday night, I had to try and rearrange creatively my holiday and I wasn't going to be able to do that until Monday morning. And it was, I think the sale ended on either the Monday night or possibly the Tuesday. I can't remember which, but I think it was the Monday night because it was a mad rush to get everything booked on my lunch break on the Monday. So sure enough, Monday comes round and I explain why I don't need a day's holiday one place that I'm already oversubscribed on, but I'd like to move it to another place, which kind of works and we get everything booked in and we're going. Like this is actually happening, which is fantastic. The downside of this is also that it means we're going to be in transit from bed to bed in the UK to the hotel for about 24 to 25 hours, which would be fine for the payoff if it wasn't also Chris's birthday. And that means he's going to spend every single waking hour of his birthday either waiting to get on a plane or in a plane traveling to the US. Now the payoff is pretty well worth it, Although it doesn't sound it when you say for every 45 minutes we travel we get to spend an hour somewhere else. It sounds like a really bad deal, but it was definitely worth it. I, I, I wouldn't recommend going repeatedly for a weekend nine time zones over, but I would definitely do it once. <laughs> and I've done it once, so I'm good now. 
Now there's probably a more sensible way for a group of friends to spend a couple of thousand pound going to the US to the middle of a desert to watch a show get filmed for YouTube. But that's kind of where we were at. And as I said, I don't regret it one bit. We flew out, we landed in LAX and picked up our bags. We moved on and eventually we got onto our flight and we landed all the way in Tucson at about midnight local time, which I think by that point it was about 24 hours awake. So we're standing in the queue, bleary eyed, and we're just trying to stay awake long enough to get the car, get to the hotel and just collapse into bed before the next day when we can have a lie in because the guys won't get into town until the afternoon to start the event, it'll be fine. And there's a couple of people in front of us at the Avis counter and one person behind us and she's just pacing up and down giving death stares at the person behind the counter like why is there a queue? How dare there be a queue in front of me? And she's walking all the way up the row of desks, looking for the other one that's open of about the six that there were, coming back down again, huffing loudly, and basically making a few pointed comments about how long the line is and, and how upset she is with the fact that she's having to wait. Like, okay, fine, sure. And we're just chatting with the people in front of us, making a little bit of light conversation. And as I say, trying to stay awake. So eventually she leaves and just walks off and is clearly not happy with there being any queue and is much happier waiting at an empty desk for maybe somebody that will turn up. And we get to the front of the queue and the nice lady behind the desk of Avis is, says to us, very sorry about this person's behaviour, uh, thank you for waiting, how can I help? And we give them all the details and our licences for, um, for Sean and I so that they can put it on, we can get the paperwork and we can get out. Uh, and she says, oh, do you not want to add a third driver? And we sort of look at Chris, and Chris gets his license out, which is snapped completely into two pieces. And he just kind of puts it on the counter and goes, well, is that allowable? And she just sort of looks at him, like, seriously. What do you, what do you expect me to do with this? Um, and she says, oh, look, I'll, I'll go and speak to my manager and find out what the deal is. And as she walks away to go into the room, he just shouts, If it helps, it's my birthday! And she just kind of stops in her tracks, looks down and goes, Oh my god, it is your birthday! Happy birthday! And walks off. And she comes back out a couple of minutes later, having spoken to a manager, and goes, Yep, everything's fine. We're going to add you on. We're not going to charge you because happy birthday. And we're also going to upgrade you into something bigger. So we went from some... Uh, I think it was a Ford Fusion is, was the category... Uh, and we got bumped up into a forerunner, which was quite nice because we did go through the desert and we drove up a big mountain. We went to Kit Peak. I would thoroughly recommend going to Kit Peak as well. If you saw the massive black hole picture, I mean, really a massive black hole picture uh, that they did last year, the year before, it's all kind of turned into a bit of a blur. Some of that work was done at Kit Peak with their telescopes. So ringing endorsement to go there. It's a great day out and the views are awesome. The whole weekend itself is a bit of a blur, which is kind of unsurprising when you think we travelled a quarter of the way round the globe to spend two days there and then come back. But there are some bits that stick out, and I remember meeting um, Finnegan and Lucky, that was really cool, bought a couple of t-shirts. Um, we met Steve and Dave again, which was awesome. They came over to the UK a few months beforehand to EBC, and they did a big roadkill meet there, which wildly exceeded their expectations, but it was an awesome event. Uh, and we did include that in, I think, episode four, which is when we set the golf on fire. On fire! And really hasn't had a lot of luck since then, with the crank probably being toast and we need to take the whole engine apart again. So we'll see how they go. Um, but when we were over there, they did actually remember us from EBC, which is cool. So maybe we're now known as those idiot guys from the UK who keep coming to America for two days. But we did spend a bit longer the last two times. But we're still going to the middle of the desert for a YouTube show or... Well, Motor Trend show now. Now, another person we met out there was Emily Reeves from Flying Sparks Garage. And if you haven't, I fully recommend checking out their content. Really, really good. They've got a Bronco and a GTO uh, and a boat. And they've got this little VW Beetle-based kind of Bugatti clone, which is great. They're kind of working through um, right at the other end to, to sort of the GTO and the, and the Bronco end of things with this tiny little um, Beetle kit car, in effect, that's completely rusted through. But it looks like it should be good fun once it's all done. Uh, and she was doing some comparing for the Zip Tie Drags event and just kind of walking around the pits and talking to people, generally about the show and, and giving a bit of extra flavour to the event. So Sean and I had wandered off to look at one of the cars, I think, uh, and Chris had eventually joined the line of people that she was talking to. And we came back, 
couldn't see him and he shouted down hey guys from the top of the hill next to the the bleachers and um, Emily was talking to people about how far they'd come from and as soon as he shouted down obviously he hadn't said anything before this she just went I'm just gonna have to stop you one second I just heard an accent and immediately beelined down to where he was standing and said now you don't sound local where are you from and he said oh we came here last night from the UK uh, and we go back tomorrow. And she kind of looked a little bit shocked. You came here for two days. Like, yeah, yeah, we flew in and we've, we're leaving. We're here just for this event, nothing else. So needless to say, we won the How Far Have You Travelled to Be Here competition and we got a couple of gear vendors hats, which was cool, but there were three of us. And she'd promised to get us a third one and we basically never met up with her again, unfortunately, at the event. But maybe she still has that third hat waiting for the idiots from the UK who came into the country for 48 hours. The event itself was a bit of a blur, but it was a really good social time. We made a load of friends there. Drag racing was great. The car show, the... I mean, this was before I had the Thunderbird too, so I didn't even look around the swap meet to see what was there. But it was really, really good. It was just a really nice, chilled day. And I'm kind of glad we didn't take much video, because I think it would have detracted from that event. And we still got good event content the next two times that we went in 2019 and 2020. And we did get pretty lucky with the 2021 considering when it was scheduled with everything else that then happened through the rest of the year. And if you want to check out those videos, you can look at our Pedalbox on Tour playlist and do subscribe to the channel because when we go back, and we will go back again, we'll be putting out another video and from everywhere else that we've tried to get to in the last year that's now been pushed into 2021 and there are a lot of cool things hoping to happen. We really want to get back to the Nürburgring, really want to get down to Goodwood again and just generally get out on track in the UK with the SD1, with the Golf, with, well, with the Thunderbird. I mean, we might as well. I'm sure it'll corner like a boat, but it'll be good fun. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, do and hit the little notification bell already. Then you can see when we get back over there. Thanks very much for watching another episode of Storytime. If you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to check out shop.pedalbox.show, you can buy t-shirts, mugs, hats, and more. If you'd like to support us on our builds more directly, you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow, and you can sponsor us from as little as a dollar a month. Every little bit does help, and we really appreciate all the help of our patrons. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.